welcome back to The Daily Poem here in the Close Reads Podcast Network. I am David Kern. Today's poem is by Christina Rossetti, who lived from 1830 to 1894. Incidentally, she was born on December 5th, 1830. And that is, well, that is the day, I was going to say that is when my son was born. That is the day that my son was born. He was not born in 1830. She was an English poet who, in addition to all her famous poems, including Goblin Market, uh, she wrote the words of two famous Christmas carols, In the Bleak Midwinter and Love Came Down at Christmas, both of which uh, are famous to varying degrees, but I'm guessing that you have probably at least heard, if not sung, In the Bleak Midwinter. She was a pre-Raphaelite. If you are interested in Googling that, you can. I won't say too much about it here on, on uh, on the show right now. But if you want to get into the various complications and controversies and, um ideas behind the pre-Raphaelites, by all means, hit up Wikipedia or an encyclopedia or wherever you like to look such things up. It is certainly an interesting topic. This poem by Christina Rossetti today is called Shut Out, and it goes like this. The door was shut. I looked between its iron bars and saw it lie, my garden, mine, Beneath the sky, pied with all flowers bedewed and and green. From bough to bough, the songbirds crossed. From flower to flower, the moths and bees. With all its nests and stately trees, it had been mine. And it was lost. A shadowless spirit kept the gate, blank and unchanging like the grave. I, peering through, said, Let me have some buds to cheer my outcast state. He answered not. Or give me then but one small twig from shrub or tree, and bid my home remember me until I come to it again. The spirit was silent, but he took mortar and stone to build a wall. He left no loophole, great or small, through which my straining eyes might look. So now I sit here, quite alone, blinded with tears. No grieve for that, for naught is left worth looking at since my delightful land is gone. A violet bed is budding near, wherein a lark has made her nest. And good they are, but not the best. And dear they are, but not so dear. This is a sad poem, no doubt, and seems to have many allusions to Adam and Eve's fall from the the Garden of Eden and the the angel which cast them out. Um, I don't think that's reading into it too much to to say that and it's one of those poems that seems to have that sort of that tug between longing for something more longing for somewhere else somewhere um, better than this place and yet recognizing that there are lovely beautiful things here and kind of being pulled back and forth between those two things between those two longings Uh, calls to mind C.S. Lewis's idea of course that we long for something here suggests that we are made for something even greater that's a oversimplification of his idea but it certainly applies to reading this poem so that might be a passage worth looking up if you want to meditate on this poem a little bit more there's a finality to this poem but it's a weird finality it's this finality where it's like that in being shut out from somewhere else the only place to turn is to the here and now right so while we can't enter the garden again while we can't experience what is in the garden the great things that are there the the wonder the beauty and so forth the only option we have is to turn to the things here and to recognize what is beautiful about them to recognize that the violet bed near where the lark has made her nest is good and dear even if not the best or the most dear but those are the things that turn our eyes that help us remember the garden that help us remember why we were cast out from the garden and help us aspire for what the garden means um with that i'm gonna read it one more time shut out by christina rossetti the door was shut i looked between its iron bars and saw it lie my garden mine beneath the sky pied with all flowers bedewed and green from bough to bough the songbirds crossed from flower to flower the moths and bees with all its nests and stately trees it had been mine 
and it was lost. A shadowless spirit kept the gate, blank and unchanging like the grave. I, peering through, said, Let me have some buds to cheer my outcast state. He answered not. Or give me then but one small twig from shrub or tree, and bid my home remember me until I come to it again. The spirit was silent, but he took mortar and stone to build a wall. He left no loophole, great or small, through which my straining eyes might look. So now I sit here quite alone, blinded with tears. Nor grieve for that, for naught is left worth looking at, since my delightful land is gone. A violet bed is budding near, wherein a lark has made her nest. And good they are, but not the best. And dear they are, but not so dear. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Thank you.